Hi, Stephen from Mona Disso. Today I am reviewing the HP Pavilion Gaming 17T. Now this is the big brother to the 15 inch Pavilion. Now it is available on the HP website for $950. Plus for President's Day, if you use the coupon code in my description, you do get 5% off. So let's see if it is something you should buy. The spec of my unit has a 17.3 inch 60Hz IPS display, 6 core CPU, the 9750H, a GTX 1660 Ti Max U graphics card, and 8GB of RAM running single channel. It has a 256GB SSD and a 52Wh battery, plus the 9560 Wi-Fi card. The design and build is exactly the same as the Pavilion 15 Gaming. It's made entirely out of dark green plastic with green painted keys. Now the green theme continues to the key lighting, for which the only adjustability is the brightness. You do get a separate number pad, and my only complaint being that there is quite a bit of flex to the keyboard deck, and the chassis does rattle quite a bit. This is also true of the plastic Elan trackpad. It feels much more loose than most trackpads, probably because the clicking actuation runs to the top of it as well. Now above the keyboard, HP houses the Bang and Aloofson speakers, which do sound quite good, and I measured them at 67 decibels. This is more than ample to drown out the fan noise, which I must admit is one of the quietest I have ever heard on the load. Unfortunately, if you do need it to process real-time audio, it did fail my latency mon test, the high-definition audio bus driver being the culprit. The back panel is held on by Phillips head screws and has a large air intake for the two fans to suck in air. And inside, you have a 52 watt hour battery, which did give me 4 hours 50 minutes of runtime. Now, adjacent to that, there is an open 2.5 inch drive slot for which they supply the necessary connection cable. Above this is the single NVMe M.2 SSD slot, as well as the Intel 9560 Wi Fi card. Now, they do have two RAM slots, but only one is occupied, and I really do advise that you do put in a matching stick like I did for my testing. Here's Battlefield 5 gameplay using DX11 and ultra settings. Single channel is on the left and dual channel is on the right. Now with a single RAM stick, I average 68 FPS, but with two sticks, 85 FPS. That is a 25% improvement. But even more importantly though, the minimum frame rate improves by 56%. So you're going to want to do this upgrade to avoid these dips. Now the two fans do push air through some nice large rear heat sinks. And the end result is a chassis that is pretty cool to the touch. I was really impressed how cool and quiet the Pavilion 17T was. On the left is the HDMI, USB Type-A port, Ethernet, a USB-C port that can be used to charge your cell phone and output to an external monitor. And there's also an SD card reader that does accept the SD card all of the way in. And on the right hand side, you have two USB Type-A ports, the combo headphone mic jack and the power socket. Now the AUO panel may only be 60Hz and as such it's going to be more susceptible to coasting than a 144Hz panel. But it does have good colour gamut at 98% of sRGB and also has good contrast of 1020 to 1. I found it plenty bright at 298 nits and for general content creation work and casual gaming it is perfectly fine. Of course, like the 15 inch, you have the central hinge which is more prone to screen flex you know, should you grab the screen by the corners. Here's what the webcam is like. Here's a 720p webcam. It's actually not too bad. And also, and the mic I think the microphone is pretty decent too. When you're typing. And of course, it's got a quiet fan, so you don't get that fan noise either. And this is what it's like when it's on battery. It's still pretty good. I quite like it. The plastic lid has quite a clean look. It does have the reflective HP logo in the center, but in general, it was quite a fingerprint magnet. The long-term power PL1 of the CPU does settle to 45 watts and its thermals are great. I really cannot fault it. Many manufacturers push more watts and rely on beefy fans and more heat pipes to keep it cool, at the expense of more noise. Now that's all fine when you want to have a high CPU clock when doing CPU crunching work. But for gaming, it's not really needed when it's feeding something like the 1660 Ti Max-Q. Now apart from the single channel RAM, it's quite a balanced system. Far Cry 5 is typically a punishing game, yet the CPU runs at about 80 degrees Celsius and the 1660 Ti Max-Q is below 70 degrees. 
Sure, the CPU isn't pushing 3900 MHz, but it's not far off and the GPU is still at 98% of utilization. And even at ultra settings, we see an average well over 60 FPS and the minimum at 57 is great. Now, if you do have a high refresh rate monitor, you may want to lower quality settings a little bit. Now here is Rainbow Six Siege with 100% scaling using ultra settings. You can see the 1660 Ti Max-U is using 60 watts. That's 20 watts less than the regular 1660 Ti. And this definitely does help keep the system cool. Now remember, the CPU shares heat pipes with the GPU, so one will affect the other. Now the thermals look good to me. Heck, even at ultra settings, you are averaging over 100 FPS and the minimums hover in the mid 50s at most quality settings. And I did also try overclocking the GPU by 196 MHz on the core and ran Rainbow Six Siege benchmark. And I did see a 5% gain in performance. Now you won't see this in every game, but it may well close the gap to the regular 1660 Ti in some titles. Now one game that is tough on hardware is Ark Survival Evolved. And here it is at medium settings, 100% render scale. This quality setting generally stays above 60 FPS mark and it still looks pretty decent. And I think at low settings, this game looks terrible. At high and epic settings, you do take quite a bit of a hit. It's still playable, but expect console style frame rates at max settings. Overwatch, epic settings, I was getting about 120 FPS, which is great, as are the thermals. Now the GPU utilization is above 95% as well. Now it is a shame we are limited to 60 Hertz panel though. I was asked to showcase Minecraft, so I had my daughter fire it up. The, the GPU is hardly being used at all, and the CPU is only needing 14 watts to hold 4 GHz. So, yeah, this laptop can't play Minecraft. Finally, let's have a look at Red Dead Redemption 2. Using high settings, we get about 30 FPS. And again, the thermals are great, and it's more than playable. And this is one tough game to get high frame rates on. Uh, so even at medium settings, you only get 50 FPS. Now it's the CPU performance where things get a little bit poor and there's no way to increase the PL1 value. It will remain at 45 watts and as such the CPU clock rate will drop. And in fact during my handbrake encoding test it was averaging 3100 MHz until I changed the speed shift EPP to 1 and I disabled BT proc hot and increased the turbo time limit to 96 using throttle stop here. And this allowed the CPU to then average just over 3400 MHz. And as you can see, the encode time was reduced from 31 minutes to 28 minutes, which is a great improvement. However, competing systems with the same CPU that have a higher PL1 value maintain a higher clock and thus a better performance. We again see this in CDBench R20. My tweak yielding a 13% improvement, making it at least respectable. So in summation, the HP Pavilion Gaming 17T is a decent gaming laptop. It manages its power nicely to make sure the 1660TA Max-Q is being utilized nicely at very good temperatures. Low chassis temperatures and low fan noise. There is no fan control software, but you know, that is not needed. Nor is there any means to change the key lighting color. So, you know, you have to like green. Now at $900 with a coupon code, it's still perhaps a tad expensive. I would have liked to seen another stick of RAM in there and possibly even a hard drive you know, to be included at that price. Now, fortunately, these are very easy upgrades and there are no warranty stickers to be uh, worried about. And also the screen is pretty decent for a 60 Hertz panel, although it would have been nice to have a 144 Hertz option. Battery life is reasonable. And although I would have preferred a larger battery in it and forgo that two and a half inch bay, um, and put a second M.2 slot there instead. Now, before I go, I wanted to mention that a buddy of mine, it was an artist, I wanted to give him a bit of a shout out. So I've put a link in the description below of his new website. And if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing because I do have a bunch of other laptops to review. Thanks for watching.